Hi everyone, this week I am going to be pre-sprouting Summon Anemones and Ranunculus and I did a video on these earlier in the year when I first was pre-sprouting and planting them but I also do a planting in the autumn and this should give me earlier flowers in the spring. So there's a few different times in the year that I'll pre-sprout my anemones and Ranunculus. One is just now in the autumn one is in late January, early February, and then another one will be in late February. So about three different succession sowings there. And that should get me flowers through from early spring all the way through to the end of May, hopefully. And I've got a few different weddings coming up next year. So the ones that I'm planting just now in the autumn are for the late April weddings that I'm going to have. So I'm going to be concentrating on planting the more pale colours. I've got whites, I've got blush pinks because that's the colour themes for those weddings. And then in May I have got some brighter coloured themed weddings. So I'm going to be planting in late January, early February some brighter coloured ranunculus for then. And ranunculus and enemies like cool weather so they will flower in that nice early spring season. Um, it depends really on the weather we're having in the spring how early they get going but it could be early April, it could be end of April, we'll just have to wait and see what kind of winter we get. And they, because I live in Scotland, tend to go right through to the end of May for me because it doesn't get that warm most years. So I'm looking forward to having lots of lovely flowers next year and we're going to have a look just now about how to pre-sprout them because that gets them off to a quicker start. I've got more control over the growing and I might not lose so many corms um, to rotting. I can see which ones have worked and it's only those ones that I'll plant up. So let's go and have a look. So when you get your anemones home in the mail or you've bought them in the shop and you get them home, when you open the packets, you will see that they look like this. They are very dried and shriveled up and we want to plump them up and we're going to give them a head start on getting growing by this pre-sprouting process. So you can see them just there. And over here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got really clean buckets. So these flower buckets that I normally cut my flowers into, I'm just giving them a good wash and I'll rinse them out and then they'll be ready for soaking the anemones and ranunculus. The ranunculus and anemones that I've chosen to pre-sprout today are not all the ones that have come because I want to stagger the planting and I want to go with the colour themes for the weddings I've got next year. So I've got lots of lovely ones here. I've got pastello ranunculus, I've got um, white ranunculus, rosa cairo, anemones, rarity and enemies so these are all pinks and whites which goes with the color themes i've got in april and then i've got more that i'll look at in late january and early february that are brighter colors reds and yellows and oranges for the weddings that have a bit of a brighter color theme later on in may now you can see here that I have got lots of different packets of anemones and ranunculus and I need to know which are which when I'm growing them so I know which ones work well and which ones didn't. So what you need to do is separate them out in the bucket. You don't want to have lots and lots of different buckets of water soaking them. You want to be able to just do it in one or two. So what you can do is you can get mesh bags. These are mesh covers that were over plants that I had. And um, you quite often get bulbs arriving if you've ordered some that are in mesh bags. If you keep them, they are also good for the soaking of anemones. Or even if you've got some muslin that can allow the water through, you can put the anemones in that and just put a, a tie around it, um, a piece of string. And the other thing you'll want to do is you'll want to label them all up um, in the bags for soaking because otherwise you won't know which is which either. So I've got my labels and I've got my marker pen here. So that's what I'm going to do just now. So that's me, labelled them all up and um, ready to go and I've used a waterproof garden marker for these because we don't want it to wash off when they're soaking. So I'm just going to rinse my buckets out now and then we'll be ready to get soaking. So the water that I am going to pour in here just now is just going to be tap water and it is not going to be hot and it's not going to be too cold. So just tepid water will be absolutely fine. enough that you can have all the anemones or your ranunculus under the water. 
These ranunculus should plump up and double in size after they're soaking and I'm soaking them for about three to four hours. I don't want to do it any more than that. Um, three to four hours is plenty enough for them to get to the right size and have absorbed the water um, without starting to promote rotting once we put them in the soil. We don't want them to turn to mush. So the last thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to oxygenate the water. This isn't something that I have done in the past, um, but I am trying to improve my practice with growing ranunculus and anemones and to see if it makes a difference um, in the end of the day. Um, ranunculus are quite expensive um, corms to buy and I want to make sure that I'm doing my best with them to get the best flowers next year. So there's a few things you can do to oxygenate your water. You can either leave a trickle of water running for the three to four hours going into your bucket, just like this. Just a trickle like that would be fine and that's just adding oxygen to the water. If you don't want to leave your tap running for the three to four hours, you can simply just change the water a few times. So maybe every hour come back and change your water. Or you can also use an aquarium pump. So I have bought a small one off Amazon um, and I'm going to see if that works this time. In the aquarium from at the USB socket there. And I just clipped it on to the handle of my bucket. And you can see there that we've got lots of bubbles coming up and it's working really well. So we'll leave that for our three to four hours and come back and have a look at our ranunculus a little bit later. So I have taken the ranunculus out of the bucket just now and we're going to have a look and see what they are like now. So they've soaked for four hours now and they are looking lovely and plump as you can see here. Much bigger than they were to start off with when we took them out of the packets. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take our tree of soil and we're going to plant them in here to pre-sprout. And this is just a full size seed tray that I have filled about three quarters full with damp multipurpose compost. So it's not dry and it's not overly wet either, it's just moist. And we're going to space out our ranunculus like this so that they're not touching but that they're fairly close together because they're not going to stay in here forever so it doesn't matter that they're quite close. And I'm putting it with the pointy ends of the ranunculus facing down. Just like that. So I've put the ranunculus into the seed tray now, so the next stage is to just put a layer of compost over the top of it. The last thing that I'm going to do today is put in my label to tell me what kind of ranunculus it is and what date it was that we pre-sprouted them. So that's white ranunculus in there on the 26th of October and I am now going to put this tray of ranunculus into my workroom which shall be kept at about 10 degrees for the next um, 10 to 14 days and it will develop small little roots on the ranunculus and they will also develop little sprouts as well, leaves coming out the top. And after the two week stage, I will be able to plant up all the successful ones and any rotten ones will be able to discard. And that means it's only the healthy plants that keep going forward that I'll look after over the winter time. And I will keep them in the greenhouse over the winter um, to protect them from really extreme cold temperatures. And then in the early spring, I'll plant them out into the garden. So anemone corms, we're going to do exactly the same thing as with the ranunculus and you can see here that these are really hard corms, they're quite small at the moment and they're going to plump up really nicely when we soak them in the bucket of water. So exactly the same thing as before, we're going to get our mesh bag and put them in. So I'll pop them in the mesh bag with their plant label and I'll just tie the bag up and then I will place it in the bucket of water with the aquarium bucket for some oxygen bubbles. Leave it again for three, four hours, and then they will be able to be put onto their seed tray of damp compost. So this is my aquarium pump here, which I bought from Amazon. And it's really very simple. It's got a USB cable to charge it. This is the weight at the bottom and the bubbles come out here. And this is our small mechanized pump, which we can hook on at the top of the bucket. So I'm just going to pop this in just now. 
And there we go, we've got some good bubbles coming out there. So I'm going to leave those anemones for three to four hours and then come back and check on them and do the same thing as yesterday with the ranunculus. Pop them into their seed trays full of damp compost. So I've just taken out the anemones out of their bucket of water where they've been soaking for the last four hours and you can see that they're nicely plumped up too and they're ready to go on our seed tray here which again like the ranunculus is filled three quarters full with damp multi-purpose compost. So let's just put a few on here. With the anemones it's not quite so obvious as the ranunculus about how to place them in the soil. It's difficult to know which end is the right way up. But you can just lay them on their sides and anemones are very good at sending out their shoots and roots in the right direction and finding their own way to the light. So I'll just go and cover these with a layer of compost as well and then they will be put in my workroom for a couple of weeks at about 10 degrees as well. So now that I have planted up all of my anemones and my ranunculus, I'm going to look and see what other jobs I can do this week. It has been really, really wet outside, just pouring with rain all day long, every day, and a little bit wild at times as well. So that meant it has been really difficult to get outside in the garden and do any clearing of the beds and no bulb planting at all this week. It's just been far too wet for that. So instead I'm going to be tidying out the greenhouse, I am going to be looking to see whether I can bring my scented pelargoniums inside because they won't survive in Scotland outside in the greenhouse over the winter. So if I'm going to get them through, I'm going to bring them into my workroom and I'm going to sit them in the windowsill there where there's lots of light but it's warm enough for them to survive. And I'm also going to be cutting back the chrysanthemums that have finished flowering and I will lift them out of their pots and I will trim the roots trim the stems back and I will store them in some dry compost in a box in the side conservatory where it's nice and cool but frost free for the winter time and then I'll plant them up in pots and get them going in the spring and take some cuttings from them then. Next week hopefully the weather will be a lot drier and we can start on that bulb planting and I want to show you as well how to plant up a bulb lasagna in a pot for a really nice display too.